Hello everyone, my name is Pixorifs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Welcome back for episode 351. Hope you guys had a fantastic holiday if you're watching this on the day of release. And if you're not, I hope you're having a great day regardless. So today, I'm actually going to be doing a fair bit of action in this episode. It's going to be a little different from the usual building, redstone contraptions, that kind of stuff. Because this right here is almost complete. This is the museum archive. I've been working on this on and off videos and streams for the last little while, and I am finally at the stage where I want to start adding in a few of the last things that I've been gathering for this place. And then it's going to serve as basically my main storage area for the rest of the museum project. We're going to be storing stuff for exhibits here. We're also going to be storing building materials here. And I've gotten all the way up to stuff like coral blocks, which I expect I won't need to store a huge amount of, but it's nice to have bulk storage for them. You can see there that I've ended up waterlogging slabs underneath these to make sure the coral stays alive next to the dead coral here, obviously on the left. And we started to think about storage for sticks and saplings and all of the other items that I'll be acquiring in bulk. There will probably be slices of storage for things like mob drops, ender pearls, you know, that kind of stuff. But the main focus of today's episode is actually down here, or it better not be down here, because the main focus of today's episode is the wither. But of course, once you fight the wither enough times, you're able to get yourself a decent amount of beacons. And right here, next to the storage I have for all of the resource blocks, so most of these actually can be beacon bases. We've got netherite, emerald, diamond, gold, and iron. I discount the other three because they are just storage blocks, really. But right Right here, next to all of those, I want to have a storage chest for beacons. That's right, I want auto-sorted storage for beacons, which, to be fair, means we'd have to acquire 41 beacons just so the item filter would work. So, I don't know how realistic that is, but if we're going to fight a lot of withers in order to acquire that number of beacons, and if you are embarking on a project where, let's say, for example, you want to fight the wither a bunch of times, so you can sell beacons to your server mates on a multiplayer server, or something like that, you're going to want to know some of the better ways of fighting it. And I've demonstrated a few of those in the series before, but there's nothing like a bit of revision, I think, at this stage in the game. And so we're going to spend an episode fighting the wither different ways, weighing up the pros and cons of each one. Naturally, this is going to require us to get hold of a few more wither skulls. And so <laughs> I've come back out here to my wither skeleton farm, which still seems to be performing pretty well. Still need to make a couple of changes to the killing mechanism if I want it to be superb but in the meantime I can get up in here and kill a bunch of these wither skeletons with looting to hopefully get myself a few more skulls and get hold of enough that we can fight the wither a whole bunch of times in this episode. Maybe not 41 times, but we'll see what I can manage. And while we're doing that, let's have a quick talk about basic wither preparedness, because as I'm sure we're all aware, if you fought the wither before, the fight with the wither can go wrong very, very quickly, especially on Bedrock Edition. And I should also point out that most of the tips I'm going to be giving here are for the Java Edition wither fight. The Bedrock Edition wither is a little bit more of a pain. It has other attacks and can usually get out of situations that would trap the Java Edition Wither a little bit. And there are definitely methods for fighting the Wither on Bedrock, which I will leave up to the Bedrock Edition players to share with you. For now, though, let's focus on the Java Edition fight. So, basic Wither preparedness really comes down to a couple of things, most of which is just expecting the fight to go wrong and being prepared for an instance in which it does. And for that, you will want a couple of things. First of all, milk to get rid of the wither effect. You will also probably want to bring food with you for basic health regeneration and try and keep your hunger bar filled up as much as possible, but most of the time, if you want to get rid of that wither effect quickly, and it can last for a while if it hits you with a skull, a bucket of milk is usually the best way of doing that. Bear in mind, of course, that it will take away the rest of your potion effects, so it is still something to only be used in emergencies, and in most of these circumstances we're going to try out, you won't need to worry too much about that. But of course, in the event that you need to regenerate some health a little bit faster, potions of regeneration are always a good idea, and in fact, splash potions of regeneration can also sometimes be a little bit helpful because you don't waste the time drinking the potion you just throw it on the ground and if you are quick-witted enough if you've got your wits about you you can usually just throw it at your feet and that will give you enough regeneration that you can get out of harm's way with that effect on you. Now, obviously, if you want to go on the offensive, you're going to want a strength potion, and most wither fights are relatively short, so a shorter duration strength 2 potion buffed with glowstone instead of redstone 
is probably going to give you the edge. I would also recommend bringing a Smite 5 sword or a Sharpness 5 sword to the fight just to make sure the Wither goes down as quickly as possible in that second phase of the fight where it is immune to projectiles. You'll also want to brew up a couple of other things, namely some Splash Potions of Healing because those can give you a little bit of instant health. Instant health 2 is nice and easy to acquire. You don't have to worry too much about duration in this case because it's instant and you can even get these potions directly from the brewing stands that you find in end city ships when you're looking for elytra so a lot of the time you might have a stockpile of these that you just haven't used if you're like me and you just want to bring everything back from an end city instant health potions are not that hard to find and of course you can always just brew those using glistering melon there are a couple of other potions that i will recommend brewing up though namely fire resistance potions and night vision potions and the reasons for these really is that the environment of the wither fight can be a little bit unpredictable the wither is destroying terrain all around it as it goes if you're fighting it in normal circumstances and a lot of the time that can open up a pocket of lava you didn't expect or destroy light sources that you were relying on to see the environment around you and that can turn the tide of the fight pretty quickly so i think having some fire resistance potions and night vision potions is usually a good way to go just to make sure that the fight goes your way and that you don't get tripped up by any of these unfortunate circumstances and if you're just bringing one of each of these potions remember don't drink milk after you've got the effects on otherwise those effects will just go away again because milk removes all potion effects not just the harmful ones and for the last but not least measure that we're going to take protecting ourselves against the wither totems of undying i don't rely on them all that much because typically i don't put myself in situations where i need them all that often but fighting the wither can be once again an unpredictable process and if you're on the ropes having a totem of undying in your offhand is potentially going to mean the difference between you winning or losing especially in a hardcore world where you've got to protect yourself against the wither and basically every other threat at all times totems of undying are kind of essential the totem will of course give you regeneration absorption and fire protection effects so that can be pretty handy in a pinch but i still recommend not solely relying on these as a crutch in a wither fight because of course once you've popped the totem you are potentially exposed to more attacks and if the wither fires a couple of projectiles at you at once a blue skull and a black skull head towards you at the same time then the totem of undying might not regenerate your health fast enough for you to survive so even then you can end up dying to the wither last of all of course i mentioned the sword already let's talk about the bow i of course want to have power and ideally infinity on me so i don't run out of arrows mid fight but infinity or mending is really your choice and you might want to swap your elytra out for a decent netherite chest plate or a diamond chest plate with enough protection enchantments on it sacrificing maneuverability for that overall protective effect because remember that is probably the most protective piece of armor you can have and by using elytra you are removing a decent chunk of protective points now, if you look at my inventory, you can see that we are a little bit overprepared for the average wither fight. But some people watching this video or some people who are newer to Minecraft, some people who may have like slightly limited reflexes or mobility, motor skills, that kind of stuff, might have a hard time fighting the wither on their own without all of this extra layer of protection on top of it. So if it's your first time fighting the wither or if you are the kind of person who dreads the wither fight these are probably the basic steps you want to take to make sure that you are as protected as you can be when going into a fight as dangerous as this and in about half an hour here at the farm i did get myself a lot of coal but also about half a stack of wither skeleton skulls of course we want a multiple of three so that we can summon that number of withers so we're looking at 11 wither fights so far and i think i still have some wither skeleton skulls back at the founders forge storage area so i'll probably head back there before we start our first with a fight yeah it looks like we had 25 in here already taking us to a total of 58 which gives us 19 with a fight plus one skull left over that should be more than enough for this episode having 19 extra beacons certainly sounds like a fun idea and while i was looking around i did find an extra nether star that i had in storage so we could have 20 more beacons by the end of this episode i don't know if i have the resource blocks to contain all of those but we're going to need to display a few at the museum anyway so having a bunch of beacons available seems like the right thing to do and of course we got plenty of soul sand from all of that time we spent mining for netherrack i reckon having a decent amount of that on board should be fine 
But for the first fight, we don't even have to use materials to summon the Wither at all. Instead, we have to come back to this, frankly, pretty impressive piece of terrain generation because around here somewhere in a cave, yep, <laughs> is where I decided to summon the Wither for the episode where I died a whole bunch. In fact, I think it might even be down here somewhere, and if I listen carefully, I might be able to hear it. So we're going to track down the Wither that I unleashed on this biome. I've got a handful of the potions I expected to need whilst we were traveling traversing this area and hopefully we should be able to find that wither and finally get rid of it from the world once and for all. Yep, there's my ender chest from when I placed the wither down and oh yes, I can definitely hear the wither now. It was uh, the last count stuck somewhere at the bottom of this hole, so I'm going to have to play it a little bit safe and hopefully we'll be able to head on down here and fight it. <laughs> And it feels a little bit sketchy coming down here into a wither fight. Look, there's all my uh, burner gear that I had with me. And uh, it sounds like it is behind me somewhere in this direction. So i got to play it a little bit safe. Yep, there it is. All right. Well, let's see if we can get a couple of quick hits in. And okay, the wither is immediately on me. All right. Well, this is the way these fights often go if you're just fighting it the standard way, as I think of it, which is just kind of one-on-one -on -one in a cave. And hopefully we should be able to drink the strength potion and use that regen if we need to and the wither will also be distracted by other mobs around it in the cave so if there are any other hostile mobs around here it's actually not a bad thing if they're around like you probably don't want to light up the cave too much ahead of time well there we go took our first hit from the wither and looks like we should be able to back off a little way into the cave system here and beat out that wither effect instead of worrying too much about drinking the milk because right now i kind of want to keep a little bit of that night vision on deck if we need it. Now at this point I'm going to drink the strength potion because despite the wither's health bar climbing a little bit it's going to be in sword only mode pretty soon. Once I score another couple of hits with the bow it will drift down, it will no longer be able to fly and that's when we really need to press the advantage. So let's try and sneak a couple of shots in here and okay it looks like that right there is probably going to be in sword mode now. Yep okay so now we can just get a couple of Quick hits in on the wither, and hopefully with the protection provided by this chest plate, there we go. Managed to finish it off with fairly minimal damage, and there we go. We got our first nether star of this episode, at least one that we actually got from a wither we fought today. And man, that netherite chest plate really made all of the difference there. The wither was right up close in my face, but I was able to beat out the wither effect. And right now, with the wither effect, but with natural health regeneration, I'm really not seeing that much of a dip in my health. So that is all thanks to the fact that I've got golden carrots, which are a pretty decent source of saturation, and I've got myself some very protective armor. Yeah, I can even collect my original ender chest from that episode. That's great. It feels like we are tidying up the remains of what I left here originally. And so method number one, just kind of fighting the wither in a cave feels like the standard way to me. And it has its pros and cons. Obviously, the fight can go a little bit chaotically, but it does feel like a fairly safe way to fight the wither. We're going to stick around in the same area for what I like to call the tunnel method. This is basically the first way I ever fought the wither in the survival guide. So folks who've watched my first ever wither fight episode, will have seen this already. It simply involves digging out a decent sized tunnel. This one is longer than it just looked when I Optifine zoomed in on the end there and we create a 3 by 3 by 3 area at the end here where we're going to summon the wither. I've just grabbed the ingredients to build the wither out of my ender chest. We're going to take that away and of course the wither does not like to have any blocks either side of the soul sand T there and there when you spawn it so you've got to make sure that those blocks remain free. But outside of that it's just going to be a case of running back down this tunnel once the wither explodes we're going to start shooting it with a bow we're probably going to leave the fire resistance and night vision on just in case because we are around y24 right here so we shouldn't encounter any y11 level lava lakes but you never know what the wither can uncover and if it starts to go off towards any other mobs in this area because the wither will target the other mobs it's potentially going to start drifting in a different direction but if it stays focused on us then we should just be able to lure it down this tunnel backing off the entire way firing arrows at it and and then hitting it with a sword once it gets into the final stages. So for now, we're going to drink that fire resistance and drink that night vision. Our precautionary potions are going to come in handy there. We'll 
put all of the glass bottles together, place the final wither skull, and we are good to go. Let's back off a little way before the wither explodes. This is the first time we've actually summoned the wither in this episode, of course. And here we go, get ready to shoot the arrows as soon as it explodes, which is pretty much right away. And from here, the tail should stay in sight, which means the wither's hitbox is available to you and all you'll need to do is land a couple of solid bow hits. Once it's in sword mode, we can walk forward a little bit, give a couple of quick swipes. Once again, I'm using a sharpness sword here, not a smite one, so we could be doing more damage and even more, of course, with the strength potion as well. But this is a pretty safe way to fight the wither. You'll notice we haven't been hit so far and just like that, the fight is over. That is really not bad, and the rest of the tunnel length is completely unnecessary, but sometimes the fight just goes off a little way, so it helps to have a little bit of protection. Two with the stars down in this episode, and I'm feeling better and better about my prospects all the time. In fact, I feel good enough about that fight that while we've still got the night vision and fire resistance effects, we're going to try that again, and this time, once the wither's health gets down low enough, I'm going to attempt to kill it with a splash potion of healing or two even because we do have a couple of those on us I haven't needed to use them yet for this version of the fight especially and the wither can actually be harmed by splash potions of healing in the same way that splash potions of harming deal damage to normal mobs it's actually possible to damage undead mobs using the healing effect so let's try and take out the wither one more time still wearing full netherite armor still using the same strategies that we've employed so far and hopefully we can get it down within an acceptable range of health that a couple of well-placed splash potions are going to finish it off. Gotta dodge those blue skulls, of course, they are possibly the most lethal attack the Wither has. One more hit, and then Splash Potion, yes! <laughs> that was absolutely textbook, and that honestly felt like the ultimate insult to the Wither to finish it off with a potion that way. Bear in mind, though, that Splash Potions of Harming, if you ended up using those, would actually heal the Wither as an undead mob, so that's something to bear in mind. Three nether stars down. All right, I feel good about this. And while you might think it'd be a cool idea to just have a bunch of dispensers splash the wither with splash potions, I'm here in a creative test world to show you why that isn't a good idea. I don't believe in this method strongly enough to attempt it in the survival guide world, and a little bit of testing here has kind of proven my point, so I'll show this to you now. Of course, we're going to build the wither the normal way. It's not going to try and attack me right away because I'm in creative mode, but even if it did, you would find that this method often goes awry very very quickly for a start the explosion here has the potential to deal a little bit of damage to some of the dispensers and then once i activate the circuit that activates the dispensers even using lingering potions surrounding the wither in this cloud the wither isn't going to take a great deal of damage from that and the reason for that ultimately comes down to the fact that the wither is going to be invincible whenever it's taking damage. Temporarily, it enters this damaged state where it cannot then take more damage. And so stacking all of these potions up like that is not really going to work. And ultimately what happens then is the wither gets control of its movement, starts to leave the area, flies away, destroys some more blocks, and gets out of the range of these dispensers. So in order to create a system like this that would reliably kill the wither, you would have to be ultimately very, very sure of the wither's movements and guide it down some sort of corridor lined with dispensers without it using these projectiles to blow up the stuff to either side. And that's just not entirely likely to happen. For the next fight, I still have the effects, but I don't know if I'll need them this time around because we're going to be doing the fight on the surface. That's right. You can, of course, fight the Wither on the surface. I do not recommend it, though, because the fight can get very chaotic very quickly. And as we've seen in the cave example so far, the Wither tries to hover above the player, which can make it very difficult to get away from it and fight back. So there are a couple of things you probably want to do when you're on the surface. For a start, of course, make sure you're nowhere near anything that you've built at or any existing build project, other people's bases, or anywhere you want to build because this place is likely to become a bit of a blast zone pretty quickly. The other thing I would recommend doing 
is making sure there are enough passive mobs around that it becomes a target-rich environment for the Wither in the event that you need to escape, because the Wither will not always track players. It will go after other mobs as well, as we know, and passive mobs are an easy target for it. That will also net you a few casually acquired Wither Roses, which can be a nice thing to have if you don't have a Wither Rose farm set up yet. So I think what we're going to do is come to about here. I think that's where we'll build the Wither. Nice flat area, a little bit of elevated terrain so we can have the high ground. And I'm going to keep myself maneuverable for this fight. I'm going to leave my elytra on and I'm going to put plenty of fireworks in my hotbar. And we're going to try and outmaneuver the wither as best we can. Still got the instant health and regen just in case we need it. Still got the milk on hand in case we need that. But for now, it's time to get the wither all set up here. And I just placed the last skull and of course there was a blade of grass underneath there that was preventing the wither from actually spawning in. So that was a little bit weird, but there we go. All right, the wither is primed and ready and in a second or two, we should get that first explosion, which means it is game on. Yep, there we go. And as you can see, the wither is already going after some of the surface animals. The passive mobs are the targets and right now, Yep, there we go. We've attracted the Wither's attention. So this is the point at which I'm going to start flying, and there is a couple of variants to this style of fighting the Wither. For a start, you might want to try bringing a Trident to this fight, because the Trident could potentially be a good way of fighting the Wither in the air. As you can see, though, the Wither tends to try and hover above the player, and as such, when you fly above it, unless there's another player or another target that it's got in its sights, it will tend to fly up pretty high. And once it gets up there, if you get a decent distance away, it will kind of become passive and just start drifting downwards slowly, firing those skulls in miscellaneous directions <laughs> until it finds another target to attack. In this case, a few of the passive mobs that are nearby. Night is also falling and we should get a few hostile mobs popping up around here which the Wither will freely attack as well. And this free roaming approach it's taking to the battlefield is kind of why I don't like fighting the Wither on the surface too much. That and this <laughs> this effect that's happening right now where the Wither is just like constantly above me is very, very irritating to fight and I kind of don't recommend it. Although as far as dramatic screenshots go, that's a pretty cool one if you ask me. <laughs> now if the fight lasts into nighttime as obviously this one has done, the problem then becomes how do both you and the Wither deal with the hostile mobs in the area? And the Wither will obviously just fireball them from above, so it's really not going to to be at risk from having anything else to fight, whereas you are probably going to have to deal with both the Wither and the other hostile mobs that are on the ground. And believe me, firing at the Wither from midair is not all that easy, especially when you're having to turn around suddenly and aim yourself directly at it as it fires a skull at you. So this is going to make the fight a little bit chaotic, and as you can see, it's not gone nearly as quickly as some of the underground fights have. In this case, I think the best strategy I've found so far has been to lure the Wither up into the air and then shoot it while it is on its way down again before it starts to target any other mobs because at that point its movements become a little bit more predictable. Another aspect of the Wither people don't talk about all that much but that definitely seems to exist is the fact that the Wither kind of has a lifesteal effect for anything it attacks. It will regenerate its health slowly, naturally, but in this case, it is actually regaining a little bit of health every time it attacks another mob. So that target-rich environment we talked about earlier, distracting the Wither, may actually not prove advantageous to us in the overall scheme of the fight. Let's try that tactic again, though. Let's try and get a couple of shots on it as it's floating down here. It's firing the blue skulls, which means it doesn't really have a target right now. It's just looking around for obstructions and stuff to break. Hopefully, once we get a couple more hits in, if we can at this range, yes. Now it becomes immune to projectiles, and now hopefully, if we can stay on top of things here, we can finish it off with a few final hits of the sword. But once again, I am going to have to stay a little bit maneuverable here and get rid of that wither effect before it deals more permanent damage to me. <laughs> Whoa, it just killed a creeper right in front of me. That was pretty wild. Okay, let's see if we can strafe around the wither, deal a few more hits, keep it at range, avoid that withering effect, and... There we go, we took down the Wither and now we have to take down all of these zombies that are kind of crowding me in this area. Hopefully we don't end up with a creeper coming along and exploding, destroying that nether star that is rightfully mine. Nope, I picked it up. We have four nether stars and <laughs> would you look 
at the devastation the wither has caused to this area. You definitely don't want this happening anywhere that you care about, like a village or something that you wanted to protect. That is absolute destruction on the surface area at least of this landscape and a little bit up here into the mountains as well. Still once again we get the benefit of going around and collecting up some wither roses some of which if the block is valid will actually be planted on the grass <laughs> which is a pretty fun little effect but yes once we got a couple of wither roses from the area I think it's probably time to go and attempt the fight in a slightly easier set of surroundings. And that is of course here in the end. Now of course you'll have to excuse the chicken noises but in the previous previous episode we did set up a temporary like minimalist with a rose farm using some chickens here to breed uh, a bunch of eggs <laughs> to, to give us a bunch of eggs that we could then use to uh, to kill a bunch of mobs in this area thanks to summoning the wither and the explosion causing them to drop wither roses. In this case though we are just going to summon the wither the normal way and then find a way to exit which will probably be out the side here. And this is a setup that a lot of people have seen before and a lot of people use frequently to kill the wither in larger quantities. If you want to kill like a bunch of withers one at a time you can use this method and sometimes people even spawn iron golems or other mobs to help them along. What it involves is setting up this T shape of obsidian right underneath the center of the end portal. It's kind of difficult to tell from this angle, but that block there, the block that basically forms the tail of the wither, is directly under the central point of the end portal. You can see there my coordinates are 0, 0, which is the block the end portal uh, pillar is in the very center. And by setting this up two blocks underneath that, you can place some soul sand against the T-shape like so, and you can actually spawn the wither in in this direction, like that. And then it gets stuck underneath there and is unable to leave thanks to the fact that its initial explosion cannot destroy obsidian blocks. And there we go, once it explodes it should just be trapped underneath here and is already taking suffocation damage. So all I should need to do is attack it a few times with my sword and it's no longer able to drift down into this spot because the obsidian is actually blocking it from doing so. And the only attacks the wither can use to break blocks like obsidian are being blocked by bedrock which even to the wither is unbreakable and the fight is over just like that. Very, very efficient, very easy and hopefully no ill effects on the surrounding environment if you've done it right. That right there was Nether Star number five, not too shabby. And you know what? I think I might also go away and get the ingredients to build an iron golem so I can demonstrate the fact that iron golems are also able to take care of the wither with relative ease. Yep, it seems like one of the iron golems is happy to take on the wither. The other one is just kind of standing around right now, but it's uh, certainly doing a lot of damage there, as you can see. Probably about as much damage as I was doing with my Sharpness 5 sword, and then uh, it seems to have just kind of lost interest at this stage. So I'm gonna step in here and deliver the final blow. There we go. And <laughs> as you can see, they have not taken a scrap of damage from what I can tell. They probably took a little bit of initial damage, but it does not seem to have affected them. They've not started to crack up or anything. So maybe a couple of iron ingots would sort these guys right out and make sure they had full health for the next fight. That is Nether Star number six. And as you can see, iron golems pretty devastating when they can keep their focus. And while we're here in the end, we may as well get our own answer to the age-old question of whether or not the Wither would fight the Ender Dragon. And to be honest, throughout this entire recording, I didn't really have a great deal of faith that the Wither and the Ender Dragon would fight. And the reason this is so late in the video is that I didn't expect this to be the highlight of the entire experience, but somehow it ended up being that way. I had the replay mod running throughout the entire thing and I'm recording this as a post commentary now because when the Wither was summoned in and started to fight the Enderman around me, I kind of thought, yeah, it's just going to do the same thing it usually does and avoid the dragon in favor of the smaller mobs it can reach from the ground. But later on, as I aggroed the Wither and it started to fly up towards some slightly higher targets, I noticed it actually start to target the dragon itself. At one point on its random flight path, the dragon and the wither actually collided, dealing damage to the wither and the wither at the same time dealing damage to the dragon. And from that point on, you actually saw the wither trying to attack the dragon from the air, as though it was physically going after the dragon at some point, shooting skulls at it the entire time. And the dragon moves faster than the wither does, so a lot of the time it would get out of range and the wither would target something else, but often when the dragon flew within range again, the wither would start attacking it and going after it, sometimes 
even following the dragon through its more complex aerial maneuvers in order to try and land a couple of hits. It was fascinating to watch, and I started slowing down some of the replay mod footage that I could get afterwards just to see the dragon and the wither actually fighting, something that I never thought was going to be possible. Look at the dragon coming through this pillar and hitting the wither as it exits. Once again, this is not the way the fight is programmed. The dragon is programmed to only really care about what players do in the arena. Taking down crystals will make the dragon more aggressive and come in towards the center. It's not going after the wither in any way, but the wither is pretty intent on attacking the dragon, which just kind of goes to show how ridiculously hostile the wither is to every form of life, except for the undead, as you can see from some of the other footage where it doesn't really attack skeletons and zombies, but it will attack the passive mobs in the overworld. But take a look at this though, the wither is actually circling around trying to fight the dragon, and the dragon is definitely avoiding all of those skulls. If any of them lands on target, then the dragon is going to take some damage, but I think the dragon is just too maneuverable for the wither to actually fight. Eventually, however, they ended up reaching a bit of a stalemate. Even with the dragon's crystals gone and it no longer able to regenerate health, the dragon simply was too fast and would outmaneuver the wither at every turn, leading to the wither only scoring a couple of hits ever, and usually only when the dragon's path intersected with its own. The dragon also wasn't going to attack the wither frequently enough for the wither's regeneration to do anything, and it had too many endermen to fire projectiles at and regenerate its own health, meaning I was left to take down both of them, and I decided to go after the dragon first, the dragon's health just being an easier thing to whittle down over time, and the wither just being a little bit too irritating when it came to fighting it on the surface like this. Okay, that's the dragon taken care of. Yeah, unfortunately, the wither is just not doing enough damage when it wants to attack the dragon to really have any effect on the fight and it is pretty cool watching it run around and take out all of the endermen and wow the the end kind of lit up when that happened in a really weird way i'm kind of surprised by that but uh, yeah let's finish it taking out this wither which should be really no different than fighting it on the surface with the additional distraction of all of these endermen everywhere Okay, this last blow should do it. Yes, we killed the wither in mid-air above the Ender Dragons arena. That that took a while. That whole fight was about 20 minutes long and Nether Star number 6 is ours. Very very nice. That was that was pretty wild. That was one of the most fun things I've done in Minecraft for a little while. And I hope you guys enjoyed the replay mod footage as well. And yes, the eagle-eyed viewers among you will notice that I did die at one point during that fight, although thankfully not to the Wither, because the Wither has a reputation for destroying your stuff with a subsequent Wither skull explosion. No, it was actually an Enderman that killed me as I landed. I think I'd just been looking around the arena too much and made eye contact with a couple of Endermen, and for whatever reason, I just wasn't on my game. I was too worried about the Wither and the dragon flying around, and the Enderman absolutely slaughtered me. <laughs> but luckily I was able to get some stuff back together, had plenty of backup gear back at Founders Forge, and was able to recover all of my equipment, no harm done. A few levels lost, a little bit of dignity unfortunately lost as well, but still managed to get myself back in the fight and ultimately dispatch the Wither. And we're going to keep the replay mod running and post commentary pixel riffs running as well for this last section of the video because I recorded this entire section under one specific assumption and that was that the wither could fight the wither. Now I set up three withers to be summoned at the end of this safety tunnel here, once again making sure that I'd made a few preparations and I also installed my netherite beacon with resistance 2 above the surface because I expected that this version of the fight could go very very badly wrong. What I was counting on was a section in the Minecraft wiki which says that the Wither will not fight the Wither unless one of the other Withers fires a skull at it, and then they'll become aggressive towards each other. And there was me thinking, it's pretty easy to get this to work in an enclosed space. So once again, I decided to put myself down the end of a tunnel and hopefully some of the Withers would attempt to fire past each other to get to me, 
and then they would aggro each other. So I took myself a night vision potion, I took myself another fire resistance potion because I wasn't certain if there was lava in the area, and I went ahead and summoned three withers in a row. And eventually what I found was that they pretty much formed an orderly queue to attack me. They actually ended up attacking me only one at a time with the other two somehow unable to pathfind towards me and that made it very easy to take the withers out one by one. And I was hoping that while one wither was engaged with me, the other two would be trying to fire at me as well and then hit their compatriot which would mean I would end up with a wither fighting another wither. But in the end, even when one of the withers fired a skull at the other one, it didn't really seem to take any effect. And whether that was because the wither was focused on me, or maybe that's because for whatever reason the Minecraft wiki is wrong about this particular feature, but even though withers don't normally attack each other because they are undead mobs, I was really hoping we could get that effect to work. Having said that, for a fight with three withers summoned at once, it went exceptionally well for me, and I was able to take down all three of them one after the other, simply because the third one didn't really seem all that interested in me until I started attacking it. And there were no mobs around to throw a spanner in the works and have that wither go off in a completely separate direction. And that's how it's done, folks. All in about three minutes. There we go. My night vision potion hasn't even got down to five minutes left on it. We have got ourselves three nether stars and the same little safety tunnel. They just queued up and we knocked them down. Fantastic stuff. Well, look at this. The wither is practically mining for us at this point. And I think I'm probably going to end up killing the rest of these withers using the tried and tested method underneath the bedrock portal in the end. Because man, I am <laughs> I am sort of done fighting the wither in normal circumstances at this point. But folks, I really hope you've enjoyed this episode because we've done a lot of wither fighting. We've taken a look at several different ways of doing it and most of them seem to be okay. All I will say is maybe don't fight the wither on the surface. <laughs> Seems like the most sensible thing to do. Thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.